Okay, so today I'm going to compare the new Holystone 720G against the Ruko F11 GIM 2. I've done reviews on the 720E, which I'll put on the screen now, um, which is one of my last videos. And I've also done a full review on the Ruko F11 GIM 2, which I've been using ever since as well on my camps. Now the 720G, over and above the E, realistically, only has a gimbal. Um, they both have image electronic image stabilisation. Um, they both do pretty much the same thing from a functionality perspective. But it would be interesting to see the picture quality in comparison to the Ruko as well. Because there are some deals to be had on the Ruko now, so they're very close in a price perspective. The difference between the G and the E, apart from the gimbal, is that with the E you get two batteries and with the G you get one. And they're both the same price, that's probably why you get the gimbal in place of the spare battery. So you've got longer flying time with the E. Um, but the issue that I found with the 720E was that the stabilisation of the camera wasn't very good because it didn't have a gimbal. Whenever you turned left or right, or you accelerated forward or stopped, the whole camera would move up or down or left or right, um, and it would tilt and bank. So it wasn't ideal. Hopefully, the gimbal on the 720G will have resolved that issue. And with these two drones, just a little extra, and a comparison against what you could get out there. I've also done the same flight using the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And you'll see the results. So I just want to point out now that these videos for some reason did not record onto the SD card within both drones, but they did record onto my phone. So in all honesty, they're not in full 4K, but they are in HD uh, 1080 pixels. And this is a still shot from the Ruko. So this is the F11 GIM 2. Just to show you it going across the field, just to see its stability, pitch quality and colour. And this is the Holy Stone doing pretty much the same route. Now I can already see the difference with the colour and the picture quality. And I've not changed these at all. So side by side, this is how the two look, both in 1080p. Trying to pan with the F11 GIM 2 is not easy. It's slower, it's more controllable, but it's hard to keep a constant smooth pan using the joysticks. The Holy Stone, again, you can see the quality difference between the two. It's smoother, but it's too quick. And these are the two side by side now. So again, the pitch quality really stands out on the Ruko F11 GIM 2 as opposed to the Holy Stone. And then this is just a drone shot heading across towards the, um, the, the sea there. Now when you turn the F11 GIM 2, it turns incredibly quickly. And quite often I've noticed, as you see in the top corner now, that you actually see the propeller blades. And that's due to the movement of the gimbal. Um, but it does turn very fast. You can slow it down. That's just me doing it at full speed. And then zooming back in towards myself. Now the same with the Holy Stone. A smoother turn, but it's because it just doesn't go as fast as the Ruko. There's no real benefit or difference, I think, because you can just you can choose how, how fast you want to turn it anyway, so it's not a major problem. But again, you can see that picture quality between the two. Side by side now. Again, that really stands out, the pitch quality, the depth the colours, the richness of it. There is a real difference now, no doubt. I can play about with this post-edit, but I just wanted to show them side by side as they come out of the actual drones. So now testing the Ruko F11 GIM for follow me mode. So I've used the Ruko quite a few times now, um, and I've used it in follow mode, and I've never had an issue with it. It works extremely well. It's not 100%. Um, but it's been good enough for what I've needed it to do. So there is only one option for it to follow you, and it just follows you on a constant basis, whether you go left, right, backwards or forwards. But it seems to do a relatively good job, as you can see here. 
it is keeping me roughly central in the screen. It doesn't tilt the gimbal, so if I was to run close to it, the gimbal wouldn't move to keep me in center. It will just move the drone, but it does an okay job. Now, when it comes to circle, when you set it, as you saw just then, it seems to just pan left and then it starts to, to go around you. For, so for some reason, I don't know why, and this happens every time with the F11 GIM2, um, it doesn't keep you dead central. I'm fairly central in the screen here now in the picture, so it, it does seem to work fairly well. It works in a different way from the other drones. You have to, to fly the Ruko above the point of interest. You then take a double shot with the buttons. It locks that point, and then you fly it however far away you want press the double point again and it will start it but it's okay it's not the best but it is considerably better than the holy stone now i've used the return to home feature plenty of times on the ruko and it's never been a problem however for some reason on this occasion bearing in mind i started it where you see me standing i hit the return to home button here it turned around and it found the only tree in the field and flew straight into it. Annoyingly, it was just on a twig, but it landed upside down and I couldn't get it to move. Luckily, just down the road, there were some workmen working on the side of the road. And uh, I went over and spoke to them and said, have you got a massive pole I can borrow? And they uh, they let me an extendable measuring pole, which goes to five meters, because this is about 20 feet up in the air. And uh, I just managed to poke it out and catch it partially. So I avoided losing the Ruko, but that is the first time that has ever happened. It has not happened before. Now, follow me mode on the Holy Stone was very sporadic. Um, as you can see here, me walking away from it, it seemed fine. It won't do it side on. It will turn and loop behind you. So you can't do a parallel side walk. And as you can see here, it's lost me in the screen and it's juddering. It's sort of flicking itself around to try and get me back in picture. So it is doing the job, but it's really not doing a very good job. So crossing around it, I just thought I'll try and make it easy for it. I'm not running, I'm not going too fast. It's just jolting. It is moving, so it is, isn't just panning on the spot. It is actually following me, but it just really isn't doing a very good job. So I'm now trying the circle mode on the Holy Stone. And again, the pitch quality is really, really washed out. It's totally overexposed in the background. You can't see any blue sky. You can't see any clouds. And it was a lovely sunny day. But if you look here, it drops right down to the ground. I don't understand this. It's got a weird setup. You, you set the meterage away from the point as opposed to picking a point for it to go around. So you have to guess and work out exactly how many meters you are away from the point you want to circle. So finally, just to show you the difference between those two budget drones and the DJI Mini 3. This is a still shot, um, but it's been expanded. So it's not a full megapixel. And the filming is in 4K, so slightly unfair, but it's about the picture clarity the colors the movement so this is me panning now um, on the dji mini 3 pro as you can see it's smooth it's progressive i could get it even slower and smoother than this uh, but i was just messing about testing it effectively again now pushing through across it's it's just so much better in its picture quality the movement is smoother it's more dramatic. The gimbal, I think, works considerably better uh, than the other gimbals, just in its movement quality. Again, come back towards me. If you look at the clouds, the sky, again, I have not edited this video. This is just as it is straight out of the DJI drone itself, as were the others. Now, follow me mode on DJI. So basically with this, you just draw a box around yourself or the object so be it a car or anything else that's moving and it keeps it absolutely dead perfectly central 
no matter where I move. You can set it for parallel following, or you can set it to follow you from behind. Obviously, it's got obstacle avoidance as well when it is following you from behind, but not when you're parallel, because it hasn't got side obstacle avoidance. Um, but from behind, you can walk through trees, you know, woodland area, and it will just move out of the way of the trees and keep you in focus, and it will keep following you. So the tracking on the DJI Mini Pro is phenomenal. So again, going to the um, circle around an object, this is with a DJI, you just draw a box around the object, you can go left, you can go right, you can change the speed as well, but it is just considerably easier than the Ruko and a million times easier than the Holy Stone and a lot more accurate. Along with the picture quality, it keeps you dead center at all times. Now, while the Holy Stone did well, it's fine for a drone, similar to the Ruko. The Ruko performs better with its optional extras like follow me, radius. I think you would have seen the difference between how they compare together. But there's a big difference in um, the setup on. The Ruko does take a long time to connect to the satellites. Very long time. It always has done, and I've used it quite a lot. The Holy Stone connects to them pretty quickly. Which drone would I have? I think for ease of use and the specs that it's got, the Ruko still beats it. But it's also more expensive. However, I've been using the DJI Mini 3 Pro quite a lot recently, and that drone is a lot more expensive. But it's obvious why. The usability of it, the setup of it, there's no calibration to be done. The gimbal automatically sets itself, the drone automatically sets itself. Um, the flight is considerably quicker, smoother, the movements are smoother, and the fact that you can draw a square around any object that you want and get it to follow it or circle it or spiral or do all the other things that it does makes a massive difference. But it's budget led at the end of the day. If you've got two or three hundred pounds to spend on a drone, the Holy Stone and the Ruko are good competitors. I would go for the Ruko over the Holy Stone. But, as I say, buy cheap, buy twice. Depends on how serious you are. And having tested these drones myself now, particularly the Ruko, quite a few times, um, that was why I decided to take the plunge and get the DJI. So I bought that out of my own money. It wasn't given to me free of charge. Damn you, DJI. So yeah, it's a lot of money, but the difference is noticeable in more than one ways. Even just the actual usability of the drone, let alone the picture quality. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, hit a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one.